pretty addicting. Hey ladies, most of the cowboys are single at the Cody Night Rodeo. If I could get on a bull every day of my life, it'd probably be heaven. If he wants to follow my footsteps, God bless his little heart. We're down $9,000 right now. Don't seem like I fit in much of anywhere. Go get me a medic. This is Mike. Did you get that one on camera? Amanda Pike, this is Laura Huey and Mike Sheridan. We headed out to Cody, Wyoming, where the tradition of rodeo began. Before any of us went out on this story, the closest we had come to a bull was eating a steak. Looks like a lot of bull, don't you? It was an exhausting assignment. The Cody Night Rodeo goes on every night, all summer long, and we were there for six weeks straight. One of the things I've learned about cowboy life is that it's about freedom and danger. So I told you about breaking my neck? Yeah. I was doing it. It's hard to imagine getting on an angry animal that weighs a ton more than you do. But these guys willingly climb on again and again. So it's a six-week soap opera on horseback with looming bankruptcy, crushed bones, and bruised cowboy egos. And that's just the beginning. The town of Cody and the rodeo are very closely linked. Cody was founded by Buffalo Bill Cody. He was a well-known Western showman who brought the idea of rodeo and his Wild West show around the world. And since then, Cody has very much been associated with the idea of a Western show and a rodeo. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. Rodeo office. The Cody Night Rodeo is the only surviving nightly rodeo left in the country. They begin each season knowing it could be their last. When we start every year, we're in the hole. And so we're depending on people coming in. And so, um, you know, it, it has to happen. They have to come in or we don't make it. You know, we'd be out of business. Join us tonight at 8.30 at the Cody Stampede Grounds for the opening night of the Cody Night Rodeo. Tonight at 8.30. Just wanted to check with you, make sure it was all right if we drove through here. See what your opinion on that was. You want your butt kicked every time you do? I don't know, is that part of the deal? Is that, uh, is that what I have to do to get it done? Could do. Can do it for you if you'd like. You have never seen a pair of blue jeans fit properly till you've been to the Cody Night Rodeo. So come on down to the west side of town tonight and every night at 8.30 all summer long. Have you seen any of my makeup pencil? Do you ever think a macho guy like you would know this much about makeup? Well, it's not as if I'm going on the prom or anything, you know. Tony Martolio is the rodeo clown for the Cody Night Rodeo. So do the markings you put on your face have any special significance? Just the crosses underneath my eye. Is that for good luck or...? Well, as I told you before, you know, I cross myself when I walk in and out of the arena every time. You know, I'm a... So, the crosses seem to give me a little bit of help. I mean, they've never let me, let me down yet. I'm still alive. For Tony, rodeo life is like an addiction. Even after breaking his neck steer wrestling, he's come back as the rodeo clown. So I did it for 12 years straight, here and in Jackson, all over, and uh, got married, settled down, had three lovely children, and got a divorce and went back to it. You know, she pretty much says, you're not going to clown anymore, which I didn't think was fair, but that's another story. Now that Tony's returned to being a clown, he has a lot to prove. His three kids are spending the summer with him, even though his ex-wife thinks the rodeo is a bad influence. Tony's got three months to win them over. Josh, have you gained more respect for what your dad does, or do you think he's just playing? <laughs> Close your eyes. I think 
he's just playing. You mean this is all for fun of what I do? Yep. You don't think that I take a risk out there? Not, no. You don't? And bull riding. Oh, just a bull riding? Yep. What's your name? Vern Powell. You're going to ride by Vern Powell. Yeah, mostly. Vern Powell went to Northeastern Junior College to get a degree in agricultural business. But there, he discovered his true love, bull riding. This is his first summer at Cody, and he only has three months to show he has what it takes to make it to the pros. This is our home away from home. We've got our mattresses in here. So actually, this is my front porch I'm sitting on right now. Hey, Mom. What are you up to? Because it's run every night, the Cody Night Rodeo is almost the minor leagues of rodeo. It's where young guys who are just starting out can come, get on a lot of horses and bulls, and gear up before they really enter the pros. I mean, it's, it's really pretty easy. At least it looks like it so far. So what does the shirt say? Second's okay for you. So second's okay on the front, and on the back it's just for you. <laughs> That's pretty so, funny. I don't know. It's just one of them deals. That's kind of the way you want to feel, you know? I want to take first every time. Some people do what they do to make money, and some people do what they do because they love it. Kathy and Jim Ivory are basically the brains and brawn behind this entire operation. Kathy runs the PR side of the business. Jim runs the rodeo side of the business. Hey, you guys are pretty busy, I mean, getting ready for the rodeo. Yeah, there's quite a bit. Pretty big rat race the first few days, and then it only lasts 90 days, and it's all over. Join us tonight at 8.30 at the Cody Stampede Grounds for the opening night of the Cody Night Rodeo. Hey, ladies, most of the cowboys are single at the Cody Night Rodeo, so come on down to the west side of town tonight and every night at 8.30 all summer long. Bull riding, steer wrestling, bronco busting. We can't get over what an adrenaline rush this is. But danger's always just a step away. When Tony's hurt, we're not sure if he'll get up again. Oh, Tony, get your feet out in front of you. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Van Benoit, and it's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Ivy Rodeo Company to the Cody Night Rodeo. What the parking lot look like? The parking lot looks good. The title: Rodeo Capital of the World. Some of the parking horses of the Ivy Rodeo Company. These animals are much like the cowboys that live to ride them. Yeah, wild and free. Yeah, that's right. These animals are much like the cowboys that live to ride them. Wild and spirited. How are you feeling right now before your ride tonight? Great. You're not nervous? Well. You're nervous, but it's not anything that you talk about. Early day cowboys bet their future on a vast new region and on their own ability to tame it. They were gamblers by nature, just as their rodeo cowboy descendants are today. No one forces cowboys to rodeo. They have chosen their own battleground, rodeo. The last frontier of rugged individualism. Oh, say does that star-spangled fairly overwhelmed when I saw my first rodeo. There was so much going on, it was hard to concentrate. I didn't really know where to turn first. The rodeo is much more than the eight seconds that the cowboy is on the bull or the horse. In fact, the preparations beforehand and mentally getting themselves ready form the major part of the sport. After you've been doing it for a while, you learn to take the nervousness and, and develop it into positive energy instead of negative energy and, and to relax and not really think about it. 
for the next event, the Cowboy Steer Wrestling. Steer Wrestling, also known as Bulldogging. Oh, McIntyre recalls me now. Steer Wrestling struck me as just about the craziest rodeo event. John Selma, next to go. The Cowboy shoots out on a moving horse, jumps onto a moving steer, and has to wrestle it to the ground. his neck doing this years ago. When he got back into rodeo, he decided to compete, even though he knows it's risky. Oh, Tony, get your feet out in front of you. What did he do? Did he break his leg? Did you see? I thought Tony was joking first. When, when he fell down, he hit the ground and rolled over and I thought, well, he missed the steer and he was just trying to be a ham. But apparently he was pretty seriously injured. Yeah. How's Tony doing? It sounded like he broke it. The guy just told me over there that it didn't look like much of a sprain. He's pretty sure he broke it, so he might be out for a while too. It's hard to say. The closer we get, it's pretty obvious that bull riding isn't for the faint-hearted. This is the Cowboys bull riding, possibly the most dangerous sport in the world. And Burns on the verge of a big surprise. No. Open that gate back there so the bell wrenches can get in. Hear anything about Tony? Somebody said he broke his leg. I'm not sure. Jennifer Rosser! Okay. <laughs> hey! Clint! You got it! What happened right there, Jim? Uh, the flagger was standing in front of the electric uh, guy. So what's it like following Jim around? I can't believe this guy has so much energy. I, I mean, I don't know how old he is. I think he's in his 50s. But look at him. He like ran out all the way from the back just to grab this girl's hat that fell in the middle of the ground. Meanwhile, there are guys that are like 18, 20 years old sitting on the fence about 20 feet away just hanging out. Bull riding is always the last event at the rodeo, and it's considered one of the most dangerous and flamboyant events. It's a beautiful night to be alive in a rodeo. This is the Cowboys bull riding, possibly the most dangerous sport in the world, certainly the most dangerous event in rodeo. I don't know why anybody would want to fight bulls, and I don't know why anybody would want to ride them, but it's sure fun to watch. out in the bull ring shooting the bull you know when it comes out and then someone next to me says excuse me and I look over and it's Tony and before I can even say anything he's like back into the fray. Oh. Right before Vern actually rides the bull he becomes totally focused on one thing and that one thing is that he's got to stay on that ball until that buzzer goes off. Meow. How'd you do, Vern? I'm good. I just blew my shot, you know, and now I gotta sit here and think about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll meet you. All right, I'll be there in a little bit. Need to get a lot more aggressive. A lot of times when a guy get bucked off, it's from a weak heart. I guess I just wasn't aggressive as I needed to be tonight.
so that's the way it goes. Boy, look at that, Patrick. Now that is something. There you go, All Patrick. Right. Hey. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, Tony, you didn't want to miss signing autographs, is that yeah, it? That's it. That's it, it yeah. I knew I could make it back. How are you? What happened? I'm, I'm all right. Uh, you know, I, I went in there just to make sure it wasn't broken. It's, he, I made him take my shoe on and I came back. In this business, it's going to happen. You just got to look at a positive attitude on it. I thought for sure Tony was going to be out, at least stuck on the sidelines, but not even an hour after he munched his leg, steer wrestling, he was back here signing autographs, making jokes. It was pretty incredible. The show goes on, I guess. For Tony, at least. Make fun of your dear old dad, huh? And uh, he got me a little bit out of square, and I looked off. And whap, right there. He turned right as I was looking off, you know. And send me good thoughts, and I'll call you with good, good words. Uh-huh, I love you, Mom. Bye-bye. This is the view I've been seeing all night, the back of you. Back of me. <laughs> it's almost not, impossible it's to that, keep up with you there that, in the rodeo. It's not that good to look at. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that good to look at. How'd it go tonight? It was a disaster. Huh? Why is that? Oh, I just everything kind of... Clown got crippled and the arena was too soft and... Oh, yeah, yeah, get back in there. Fresh steers they bought weren't any good. Let's see what else. <laughs> You're a perfectionist, just sort of, huh? Just sort of a disaster. You know, people pay money, you gotta give them something. You know? So now let's go home and do it all again tomorrow, huh? It's only 80, what, only 86 more to go now. Anyway. That's a spike. This is a spike and a spike that screws in there. Rodeo is dangerous business and serious injury is always a risk. His name is J.D. Blake and he was injured riding a bull night before last. I think I was crazy to get on one. But we met a guy who fears nothing and the other cowboys get a big kick out of him. So you know this mysterious man in black? I don't know if anybody, if, if she should call him that, we call him the black and black. The rodeo goes on for 90 days straight, and during this time, Jim and Kathy have to get up early every morning, and they don't get home until late every night. All right, bye guys. Kathy is constantly on the go and takes care of a lot of responsibilities she has for the rodeo during the day, most of which she loves doing, except for this one, having to visit cowboys who have been injured at the rodeo. His name is J.D. Blake and he was injured riding a bull night before last and yesterday they did surgery he ha has a pin that his leg has a spiral break and so we just can come by and see how he is i just came to see jd blake the other night jd was thrown off his bull the bull then stepped on jd and broke his leg oh what is that that's a spike this is a spike and a slug that screwed in there. I'm really tired. Are you? You're mighty tough, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Does it not hurt as much as it did the other night? Do you have something for that? Yeah, it doesn't hurt as bad. Doesn't it? He was on morphine, now he's on Demerol or something like that, so... How old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen, wow. So is this your first year doing uh, rodeo? Yep. Those balls are crazy. I think I was crazy to get on one. <sighs> Don't like that part. 
the Cody Rodeo embodies a lot of the feel of the Old West, including like any Western movie, the dark, mysterious stranger who comes into town. Okay, what's your name? Matt Steele. Matt Steele. 47 S T. E -E -E -E. E -E. Nobody gets to enter until they ride, you know, as soon as you ride, as soon as you get off. Event. Pardon me? I want a bull Saturday. Oh, you want a bull Saturday? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Okay, Matt. Okay. $15 are the entry fees. Fifteen. And you need a long sleeve shirt and a cowboy hat. I got that. Right. You live in Douglas, of course you do. Yeah, I bought a couple when I All left right. there. All right, Matt. So you know this mysterious man in black? Yeah, we we named him. I don't know if anybody could, if, if she should call him that, but we call him a black and black. You traveling from uh, rodeo to rodeo? Well, I'm, I come up here to rodeo for the summer. Or till I go broke, one of the two. <laughs> you have a family anywhere? Or? Uh, kind of, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got family somewhere, don't they? Yeah. All mine's in Utah. I don't plan on going back for a while. Why not? Well... There's a 60-year-old man that done my 14-year-old daughter and I want to kill him. That's why I stay away. Wow. So now what's that tattoo? That's my brand. The circle stands for eternal. The S stands for still on top and Sioux, the Sioux Nation, on bottom. Nervous at all? Pardon? Nervous? Ready to go. Next time on Eyewitness, Matt Steele won't give up. He keeps trying to pull off the big win. It looks like Vern is employing some unusual means to keep his concentration up. But will it pay off? And we have a real scare with Tony's son. Hey, buddy, boy. Hey, buddy, boy.